Our podcast sponsor today is strategytraining.com. If you want to strengthen your strategy skills, you can get the overall approach used in well-managed strategy studies. It's a free download and you can go to firmsconsulting.com forward slash overall approach. That's firmsconsulting with an S dot com forward slash overall approach. And if you are looking to advance your career and need to update your resume, you can get a McKinsey and BCG winning resume template as a free download at www.firmsconsulting.com forward slash resume PDF. That's www.firmsconsulting.com forward slash resume PDF. In today's podcast, I want to talk about two different but very heavily related concepts. The first one is the impact of confidence in cases and avoiding what we call the content trap. It's a term that we developed because of basically the trap many candidates find themselves in. So let's talk about Firstly, this idea of the content trap, because I think it heavily drives confidence in cases. What is a content trap? Well, the content trap is the belief that many candidates have that if they do just enough cases, if they just do one more case, they are going to find or be exposed to that one more great idea, that one more amazing technique, or that one new framework that could just help them pass the case interview, right? So that's a content trap, the belief that if you just had more time and then you just did more, you'd be able to do well. Now, I can say this with great authority that many of you who are listening to this podcast have probably done 50, 60, 70, 70 cases and you've still failed, right? There are people that we've spoken to who have done well over 100 cases and still fail. Some of them don't even make it past the first round, right? Why? Well, the question is very simple. The content trap relates to this. If you need to do Let's assume you're doing six profitability cases, right? Six profitability cases. And you've done six of them, but you're still not sure, right? What makes you think that seven is the magic number that would help you understand it? What makes you think eight, nine, ten is the magic number? Then that is just the problem. The content trap always exists for candidates who are very weak at understanding underlying concepts. And because they're weak at understanding underlying concepts, they believe the only way to improve is to do so many cases that basically the idea gets forced into their head. And it never works that way, right? Obviously, if you do one profitability case and you understand the underlying concept, there's no reason to do another one. If you understand the underlying concept, you just need to practice. But practice is different from learning, right? If you don't understand the underlying concept from the first profitability case, that means you haven't learned how to do profitability cases. That means hopefully you will learn it in your second one. But if you're not trying to learn it in your second one, then you're not going to learn it. Third one, you're not going to learn it. So the trick here is that the content trap is for candidates who have poor study habits. Because they don't know what to look for, and because they don't know how to solve cases, they believe that by exposure to as many cases as possible, they will be exposed to that one thing that they are missing to solve a case. Now, obviously, the content trap is a very damaging trap to be in. Because for one thing, by the mere fact that you're in that trap, you have poor study techniques, and you're not understanding the basic principles. You know, you need to do about, I would say, 12, 15 hours of case preparation to pass an interview. I always tell candidates this, they don't believe me, but I only did two days of preparation before I got into a consulting firm. Two days, that's not an exaggeration. I only did two days of preparation. A couple of reasons for that. Firstly, when I was around, not like today, you know, while it was very prestigious to join a consulting firm, there wasn't a lot of material available. And I think that because of all the forums out there and so on, I think a lot of very good candidates just believe that you must do a lot of cases. But I bet you if that if we told candidates you don't have to do a lot of cases, no one does a lot of cases, candidates would do less cases to prepare and probably do just as well. So I think that you have to do a few cases but really understand the underlying principles, which is the technique we follow. Fewer cases but understand the underlying principles so you don't fall into the content trap. As soon as a candidate is telling me, Michael, I need time to practice, then I always ask myself, but what have we been doing for the last 12, 15 hours if you need more time? I mean, if you really need more time to practice, that means that well, you haven't really learned anything with that so far. And therefore, if you're already in the content trap and you just want to admit it, giving you more time actually sets you up for even more disaster because it feeds this addiction you have to just do one more case and hopefully be better. The point is, by the time you finish, provided you train well, by the time you finish about 12, 15 hours of training, you should be able to tackle just about any case. That's provided you train well, right? Now, obviously, people are different. But the point is that you shouldn't have to do repeated cases to be able to do a case or solve a case. You should be able to do a few case, understand the underlying concept, and then how to apply it, right? If you don't understand business logic, you don't understand the business language, that's different from cases. Go read business journals, go read the Wall Street Journal, New York Times business section, 
Bloomberg, Washington Post, and so on. You'll improve your business knowledge. But the point is, the content trap is a dangerous trap to fall. And I see it with so many candidates. You know, we've had candidates last year in the internship with us, and I remember how badly they did. Why? They would do sessions with us, and I'd tell them, look, you sound fatigued. I really encourage you to take some time off today and just rest. It will be good for you. And they'll, they'll agree with us. And then the next morning, they sound tired again. I ask them what they did. They say, well, you know, there was a session held at school, so I decided to go ahead and I did three cases today. It's a content trap. All they feel is that the more cases I do, the better I'm going to be. That's really a stupid way to think about things. The more cases you do in the wrong techniques, the wrong ideas, the wrong guidance, the worse you'll become, right? The more cases you do, generally speaking, is going to be bad for you unless the quality or the difficulty of the cases improves. Obviously, that makes sense. Everyone's like that, right? If you do something repeatedly and you constantly solve it, you eventually start feeling that you can solve anything and the cases become boring. The only way for doing more cases is going to be better for you is if they're constantly made harder and harder so you don't feel that you are not learning anything. But again, you must not fall into the trap where you feel you have to do hundreds and hundreds of cases or 60 or 70. It's interesting. When a candidate writes to me, they always tell me I did 60 or 70 hours of cases. Or I did 60 or 70 cases and I'm supposed to be impressed. It tells me nothing about their capability. In fact, most candidates, when we do cases with them, they're pretty bad. I would say only about 5% are really good and we can work off with that. Most of them, even once you get into the program, are pretty bad with cases. Now, the content trap is linked to confidence. People who fall into the content trap, almost 100% of them lack confidence in a case because if your confidence is built on knowing the right answer, you're obviously going to feel show a lack of confidence because what if you get a case where you don't know the right answer, but you have to solve the answer from first principles, you're going to lack confidence, right? To avoid confidence problems in a case, don't fall into a content trap. What I mean is that be confident practicing to solve cases, not because you've seen it before, but because you know how to solve the case from first principles using brainstorming, decision trees, hypotheses, and so on, right? If you can learn that skill, then no matter what you face, you're prepped for it, you're groomed for it, right? And then let's use a simple ratio, yeah, right? To explain this as well. Let's assume you are not confident and you do the case bad. You got two things wrong. Let's assume you are confident and you got the case wrong. You got one thing wrong. Let me ask you, would you rather be wrong on two things or one thing? Obviously, you'd rather be wrong on one thing, right? And in fact, we have seen it with candidates where they will fail the, the case, but because of their personality, their charisma, their charm, their confidence, they're invited back. Either four months from now, 12 months from now, six months from now. But the point is, confidence should not be tied to content. And I will not answer any questions related to this because there's no other way to explain it. If you can't see it, you're never going to see it. So I'm not going to answer any single question related to this because every candidate tries to justify this and say, but Michael, it's so hard to gain confidence, right? That is different. That's a totally different issue from saying that you don't need confidence. Everyone should have confidence. That's the point I put forward. Everyone needs to be confident in what they do. If you can't bring confidence to the game, don't apply for consulting case interviews. And don't try to justify it. Don't say it's difficult and so on. The point is you need this skill. If you don't have the skill and you're not willing to bring it to the table, you cannot justify it away. I'm never going to say, yes, you are right. In your case, don't have confidence. I'm never, going to, I'm never going to say that. Candidates always like to respond and talk about their unique situation, why they don't have confidence. I'm not going to entertain those things. I don't even know how people can gain confidence. I think the only way to gain confidence is to put yourself into situations where you are not solving a lot of cases but where you are trained to solve cases for which you have not been exposed. That's a very important distinction. Learn first principles and know how to solve cases that you haven't been prepped for rather than trying to go through every single case. That is the only way to learn how to overcome the confidence problem. But linked to this, there will never be a situation where I'll say having a lack of confidence is justified. I would never want someone on my team who lacks confidence because when you lack confidence, which is a sort of an emotional issue, it manifests itself in physical things whereby you're a pushover with clients, you're not forceful enough with getting data. So when people say, I just lack confidence, it's not that you just lack confidence. You lack a very important emotional, I think, balance that is definitely going to have an impact in the physical things we do on a project. So there's no such thing as just lacking confidence. It's a big issue. And there's never going to be a reason why I would justify hiring a candidate who lacked confidence. It's never going to happen. And candidates who are listening to this podcast should not try to justify it. If you lack confidence, you have to deal with it. You have to put yourself in situations where you are trained to handle cases that you're not sure how to handle and you just have to become you know, much more stronger at it. As we wrap up, today's podcast is sponsored by strategytraining.com. If you want to strengthen your strategy skills, you can get the overall approach 
using well-managed strategy studies as a free download, go to firmsconsulting.com forward slash overall approach. And if you're looking to advance your career and need to update your resume, you can get a McKinsey and BCG winning resume template example as a free download at www.firmsconsulting.com forward slash resume PDF.